things have been going well at Wildland. The insect house has brought in much more needed income to allow further development of the estate. Never one to sit still, however, Horace has continued to push for further advancements, often revising the architectural plans for the entrance many times throughout its construction, much to the annoyance of everybody else involved. To distract him, Headkeeper Luke has suggested that he begin to consider what areas of the zoo he would like to populate first. This idea worked better than he hoped, spurring Horace off to plan world trips, selecting specific animals for his new collection, having to be reminded many, many times that it is not his collection and we are in fact a zoo. That would be a problem for later, however. For Luke, right now, the construction is nearing the final phase and he's keen to build up a relationship with other zoos in the area as well as the local authority. In his mind, the zoo would make a great place to rehome rescued animals, often that arrive into Colchia's international airport via the pet trade. It's one such animal that catches Luke's eye when he first visits them, an Asian water monitor, affectionately named Oscar, needing a home. However, he is soon to clear quarantine and therefore the race is now on to get the building off the ground and ready for him so that there's a home for him to come to. Now, if you like the idea of offering second chances to stolen animals from other countries, hit the like button. Or if you, like Horace, think we should just go grab them all and house them all, also hit the like button. Today's engagement emoji is the monitor, because I couldn't find a monitor. I know, hilarious. Let's jump on in. Welcome back to episode two of Wildlands. Now, before we jump into what I'm doing on the screen, I do just want to take a moment to break that fourth wall and just thank you all for the amazing reaction to episode one. Um, the channel has popped off this last week and I I am absolutely bowled over by it. I don't know if you can tell. I don't know how, how well this comes across, but my God, you people are crazy. Thank you so much. Now, with that out of the way, let's jump into what we're doing today. Now, you will have seen in the intro, I have uh, built quite a bit, but it's not all finished and certainly the outside landscaping i am going to get that put together ready for next episode where we'll have a quick tour at the start of the video today's task however is to get our entrance finished and to get a habitat built in for our asian water monitor oscar so we're starting off by building a couple of gabion walls now the inspiration for my entrance is likely i have mentioned it in a previous video it depends whether you've seen it or not but it is inspired by a zoo very close to me that I am a big fan of who have a very similar entrance to this and the idea being that half of it is hidden in the landscape by the hill going up the side of the building and then it has this wonderful glass open roof open front lets a load of light in and obviously because the Asian water monitor is a tropical animal we are going to be able to then be better equipped to keep him warm and humid rather than the cold and, well, frankly, rainy uh, weather that is uh, so common here in the UK. Now, for those of you that have seen my previous videos, you know that when I attempt to build a building, it never really starts out as a building. And that is very much the same as what we're doing here. Generally, I just started off building a small framework. And the idea is that I'm going to have the entrance and the exit both match each other. So we're going to build one side, copy it, rotate it, and pop it on the other side. So to start off, we're just going to build a frame out of our Arctic wood, as you can see there. I wanted a little bit of natural feel. We've got a lot of uh, stone and a lot of planting going around it. So this will kind of work in as well with that sort of feel of the building. Moving into the glass work on the front of the building, you'll notice I have spaced this off the floor, and that's because we're going to be putting in a floor on top of the path there. So we've left a bit of a gap for that and we're going to have big sliding glass doors that are going to go across the back of these and you'll see those in the cinematics themselves and then to cover that gap up we're going to sit the whole thing on a plinth of stone i'm also going to use that stone to form a curb running down the side of our path now this outer area at the front of the zoo we will go back and add in some lights add in some plant and hopefully get a whole sort of car park area set up out the front that will look really good for some future cinematic that I will eventually get around to making. 
For the inside, we're going to clad the whole thing in white plaster. I want this to feel quite modern. I want it to feel brand new. Um, I also want a nice big area that we can start putting up posters of our animals on. And this is going to be something we're going to come back to quite often and update and put in our new arrival posters up as we add animals to the zoo. Now we're getting really close to being able to rotate it all. Just got to pop the plaster wall on this side and then we're going to pop down our floor and I've gone for quite a warm oak, uh, the conservation flooring I believe. Uh, I loved how this looked in comparison to the glass and the plaster and it's just nice and uh, uh, nice and clean but also looks functional. It doesn't look like it's going to get wrecked by all these people walking all over it. And we're just going to copy that and just like we did with the insect house set it just a couple of bits above the pathway making sure that we get all of our path done before we put that down. A few bits of detailing now just before we're ready to copy and paste it and flip it over to the other side. Now the eagle eyed among you may notice that I am not perfectly straight and this is because I did not use the world grid to build the entrance. If you want to avoid this for yourself, always remember to use that world grid. Moving on, my second rookie error of the build was not to get the habitat water set up with these fences as you see me doing here. It's fine, we got around it, but again, if you choose to do something similar, just make sure you check out where your water is going to go before you place down your building. It was a, a long and tedious repair job later on. Now to cover up the joins between the floor and our habitat, we're going to have a planted area. And the beauty of this being inside means we can uh, bring in some tropical plants. We're going to do that in both in these planters as well as in plant pots scattered around our entrance. Now for the roof, we're going to have these two great big skylights, one at each end, just letting a lot of horizontal light in, keeping it feeling nice and airy. Then we've got our main sort of slate roof just to there to add in a bit of support. And then it'll be capped off with a concrete roof where we can mount our air conditioning units that run both the insect house and the air climate within this building. These skylight windows will eventually have pull across blinds just for when it's getting a bit too sunny on the very rare days that it is sunny in the UK. And then we're going to set up some support. So obviously this roof isn't just going to float on its own. So what we're going to do is we're going to have these pillars come up to a couple of cross girders. These are going to strengthen the walls from both sides. And then off the top of these girders, we can have multiple point supports that will hold on to the roof. This will just help distribute that weight out and it adds a little bit of unbeknownst realism. Uh, it's one of those things that a lot of Planet Zoo realism kind of stems from stuff you would never really care if it wasn't there but the fact that it is there adds a little bit of realism to it and it's probably one of the best ways I can tell people on how to detail your zoos is just add random things add things that you don't serve a purpose but they just add to the look moving on to the next area then off of the other side of the entrance we're going to have our staff buildings and these are going to be twofold firstly they'd be where the food deliveries and the staff would park uh, all of the main entrance to the zoo and secondly it's going to form the back end of our water monitor habitat so we're starting off with the outer area by cladding that in the rustic stone and then we're going to have sort of an extension building on the side out of the corrugated metal and this is going to be where all of our staff facilities are they're going to have access through the outside and also from the inside of the building down the side of the water monitor habitat into that main entrance area. And then as we expand the zoo out, we will have other staff areas, but this will always be sort of our main workshop area. One slight gripe here is that we don't have a double door wall. I built around this one, but it was still just frustrating. Back outside, we're gonna have our keeper hut windows visible and eventually the visitor pavement will move around here and allow them to see in. I know it knocks down people's appreciation or guest appreciation, but I really do think that uh, one of the beauty of zoos is being able to see a little bit of that backstage and, and see how the animals are looked after. And I really want to incorporate that into the zoo. Pressing on with a bit of detailing now. So we're going to cover in all those edges, make sure we don't have any of the gaps in the path still showing. Nothing too high. We don't want to block the view of the water so that we can see Oscar swimming around in his habitat. 
and then we're going to move on to actually building his enclosure. So we're going to start off by cladding the inside with painted brick and this will be his backdrop. And then just to drop that roof height down, we're going to corrugate the top of his enclosure with some corrugated roof like we did in the insect house, just to bring that level down a bit. That done, and you'll see it in our ending cinematics, we've got a roof structure to go under this. Now I did spend a bit of time putting together some wooden beam supports and some A-frames. Uh, again, I will show you those later on and we'll flip that round and then finished it off just in this back area by popping a little peep window in so the keepers can keep an eye on him without having to go into the main entrance. So finishing up, we're going to run our aircon system right through the middle of our uh, entryway here. This is going to help keep the humidity and the temperature correct. And I think it also adds a nice little bit of interest to the ceiling. And just like the insect house, we're going to bolt that to the ceiling with some metal support. Now our ticket desks. So these are made using the information booths and just the rectangle primitives. The idea being these would be a either wooden or plastic sort of desk kiosk area. I was a bit dubious as to whether this would work because it's on the outside of the ticket desk, but it actually works really well. Uh, people do use it. They go up to it first and obviously I think in Planet Zoo they use it to buy umbrellas and, and information. Uh, but it works really well as a ticket desk and we've covered it in sort of the prices and zoo advertisements. Now what you don't see is I did go back and add some nice wooden counters to these just so they weren't giant blocks of green. And then these screens, we're going to end up using a lot of these screens everywhere, but we've then put them on the wall uh, to basically give us an opportunity to put up some posters. And we're going to use these posters throughout the series to advertise new animals, uh, new offers, uh, it'd be like a welcoming post for our animals as they're entered into the zoo and it gives us somewhere to check back on uh, every now and then just to see how the entrance is looking and what sort of new artwork we've got up. Now something I've never done is change the keeper's uniform so I thought I'd give that a try here. I had a very clear idea in my head as to how I wanted this to look. Unfortunately I wasn't able to get there. There's something off with the way the colours look on the colour picker and then how it looks on the actual keeper. It's like they suddenly become a lot more saturated. As disappointing as that was, I did end up getting somewhere with it. The trousers were a very big point of frustration with me. Uh, but what I actually found is when I jumped over to the vendors, I actually found that their trousers, the ones that were already set up that way, were kind of already set as the colour that I wanted the keeper's trousers to be. So I ended up just copying them and setting it to both, which worked out in the end. Now, uh, the next point of frustration for the whole build was getting the water in. Uh, and I did that by basically surrounding through the wall, glass barriers all the way around and joining them all up. Off camera, I have then raised and terraformed the inside of the enclosure to get the water at the right height, making sure that the door was still on dry land. With that done, we just need to now clad the back of the habitat in with some faux rock walls. And we're going to use the good old aquatic tree and stalactite mud walls that uh, everybody uses. These are just going to be there as a background because we are going to cover them in foliage and roots and there's going to be things in front. And the idea with this habitat is that you kind of want to be looking at the water area at the front and not necessarily the land area at the back. Now, as you can see, when I brought them inside, because there was no lights, everything looked very, very dark in comparable to what it was outside. Easily fixed with a bit of lighting and a bit of colour changes, but it's something I've never really considered before. So there we go. We learned something. Now I'm going to run these all the way down the back. And as I say, they're just there to cover everything in. They're going to get covered up and it's just hiding a lot of the drop that you get in the landscape by doing it backwards like I did, as I explained earlier. Now I'm going to use my trick from Antara Park, which is to submerge a bit of tropical rock into these mud walls. That just adds a nice mud colour and it also just sort of adds a bit of variation. We're not going to go crazy with the rock work for the water monitor in here, mainly because again, as I said earlier, I want them towards the front. I want them where the guests are. So the rocks are really just here to cover up all these little uh, indents that the barriers are causing on the terraforming. I also sort of kept in mind that I want Oscar to be able to be seen from both sides. So these archways, though there's nothing outside of them now, 
next episode when we expand outwards into the zoo this will also be a viewing area so we've got quite a lot of flat rocks in that area and then at the back we're going to build him a little hide just by stacking up some rocks and I'll come back to this a little bit later on in the video about how we got that looking a little bit more realistic. Now the big visual attraction of this enclosure is that it protrudes into the walkway where all the guests will go by. To make that even more showcasing for Oscar, we're going to give him this giant rock for him to bask on top of. And I was actually quite lucky. He was able to climb up this first time and he does so quite often. So very little in the way of sort of tweaking it to get it to work. It kind of works straight off the bat, really happy with it. And we're just going to give him a couple more rocks at the back. Again, I wanted him to have a little bit of a private area so it wasn't always visual for the guests. Now, just to add a little touch of realism, uh, what I did off camera here was built a little metal frame that we're going to cover in rocks. And this is just going to give him a little hide. I'm going to pop his bedding under there, as you can see there. And I'm going to do this with a lot of our habitats. We're going to sort of build in how all of these sort of magical rock structures that seem to appear in all of these videos are, are constructed and how they're held up. Because uh, I think it's important for, as I was saying earlier, just adding that little touch of realism to uh, add things that you don't need. They don't do anything, but I think they look nice. And here he comes. Good old Oscar. There he is. Now, I really like the water monitor model. They've done really well. The texture looks great. And as you can see here, right off the bat, the uh, traversable area was brilliant. I had not even planned for him to be able to get up on top of the rocks at the back there, but the fact that he can is just an added bonus. The only downside is he did need a little bit more land than I'd given him. I'd given him far too much water and not enough land. A bit of terraforming later, we resolved that, and now we're going to start planting up his enclosure. Now, while we do some planting, I have two requests for you. The first one is to let me know if you think we should get Oscar a mate. Now, the plan is later on, once we've got our reptile house all built up, we may consider swapping Oscar out from the entrance into the reptile house. And if we do that, we could probably get him a female as well. So if you think we should get him a mate, let me know down below and we can start making water monitor babies. Secondly, while Oscar has a name, because it's kind of integral to the story, um, most of our animals won't arrive with a chosen name. And that's why I need your guys' help. What I'm going to do, if you're not already subscribed, make sure you tap the subscribe button because before each episode comes out, I'm going to put a community post up and on there, I'm going to ask you all for names for that week's animal, just as I'm recording the video. So as I say, that'll all be via the community post. Make sure you're subscribed for those. Now, just finishing up on the planting of this habitat here. Uh, just going to spatter a couple of leaves on the ground, a couple of decals, etc getting the water all set up. I felt like it needed something in the middle. So we've popped down one of these little mangrove trees. It's one of the few trees that was compatible with the Asian water monitor that was small enough to fit under our roof. And then we moved on to the lighting. Now, what I've done is I've got the lighting from our insect house, uh, the spotlights, and we're just gonna run them both sides and then aim them. We're gonna point them at certain areas of the habitat. This ended up working really well, and it's probably something I'm gonna end up doing again. I even managed to get one on the outside pointing at Oscar on his rock. So he's always got a spotlight when he's out up at front and center. And it doesn't matter what time of the day, everybody can see him. There we go. We're just going to pop that in, aim it at him. It worked out really well. These aren't super bright and uh, people shouldn't be in here in the dead of night anyway but they're on all day. So it adds just that little bit of extra lighting to the habitat. All right then, let's have a walk around our finished entrance. As you can see, I've done a little bit of landscaping on the outside, but I'll do a proper tour with you next time. I'm a big fan of all of these signs. Uh, I think they look amazing. Uh, really enjoyed making them as well, just sort of going around and getting those photos. But yes, yeah, so I'm gonna keep up with them. They're gonna happen. They're gonna be banners all over the zoo. Love it. Love how these desks turns out. They're those wooden tops I mentioned. And we've got a couple of plants in plant pots. Really, really happy with how this entrance has turned out. 
Now as we go through, you can see how the windows just let a nice amount of light in. Looks feels nice and open. I've popped a couple of the gift shop shelves down. We're not big enough to have a proper gift shop, but it's just nice to have a, like a little souvenir stand that you can get on your way out. The idea being you'd pay that at the ticket booth as you leave. And then we've got Oscar's Habitat over here. Uh, I think there he is jumping out the water. Yep, yeah, there we go. And uh, it's nice, it's not too big. It doesn't intrude too much, but it's somewhere to stop off just as you go by. And then on the right here, we've got the entrance into our insect house and that's still really popular. Still generating us a lot of money. And I will do a franchise episode explaining how this franchise works really well and what tips and tricks we are using to sort of not run out of money as we build these things. Now let's jump on in and have a quick look at Oscar. There he is enjoying his habitat. He really does keep swimming up to the guests. It's brilliant. I'm so glad he uses it. My one regret is that we haven't gone deep enough to allow him to do some deep diving, which is a shame. However, if we do move him to a reptile house, maybe we can look into getting him something sorted. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. It was a mammoth task to build, and uh, that's why it's not complete. But I'm going to crack on, get the landscaping sorted, get the car park finished and get all of the outside scenery done. And then next week, we're going to head further into the zoo with our first major walkthrough habitat. If you're enjoying the content, guys, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button. Thank you for your support so far, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.